So let's look at the top five pieces of information you need to know when it comes to bonding. All right, so for number one and two, electronegativity. First of all, in number one, this is the definition or one of the definitions for electronegativity. You need to know the definition. It shows up pretty much every time on the chemistry regents exam. Then, what you do with electronegativity, one of the things you do is here in number two, you're going to subtract the numbers for the electronegativities of two elements to figure out how polar the bond is between the two elements. In other words, how strongly one atom is pulling it versus the other. In order to figure that out, in either case, if you're asked anything about electronegativity, you're going to go to reference table S. You're going to find the elements that are in question, and you could do it that way. So, for example, hydrogen and nitrogen. Hydrogen's electronegativity is 2.2. You look up nitrogen, nitrogen's is 3.0. If you're asked about electronegativity difference, of course, 3.0 minus 2.2 is 0.8. So the higher the difference, the more polar the bond. Let's take a look at just bonds in general. There are three different major types of bonds. Ionic bonds are the transfer of electrons, covalent is sharing, and metallic is mobile electrons. Now, for covalent, we have polar and nonpolar sharing. That means for polar sharing, they're sharing unequally because there is this big electronegativity difference where with nonpolar, they are sharing equally, such as your diatomics. So let's take a look now at number four. Not only do you have to know what kind of bonds, but for ionic and covalent compounds, better known as molecules, you have to be able to draw what's called Lewis structures. So first of all, you start with elements. Any individual element, for example sodium, you find the valence electrons by either looking at the electron configuration in the last number or go by the column number. For sodium, it's in group 1. It has one valence electron. Conversely, something on the other side, like chlorine being in group 17, has seven valence electrons. So this is looking at the separate atoms. Now, for ionic compounds. Here for sodium, I have metal, nonmetal. I do have an ionic bond. When we're going to put these two together, the Lewis structure is going to look like this. You're going to put sodium, you're going to write Na with a positive sign. For chlorine, or now it's chloride, you're going to show eight dots, right? Seven of its own and one more. You don't have to have a different color and then negative sign on the outside. So for ionic compounds, you have to show the separation of charge, hence the ions. So you have your positive ion, then your negative ion, and don't forget your brackets. The charges always go on the outside of brackets. For covalent compounds, better known as molecules, now you're dealing with clusters of atoms that are bonded together. Okay, this also ties into number five, which is symmetrical molecules being nonpolar and asymmetric being polar. So let's take a look at covalent compounds and polar and nonpolar on the next page. Okay, so there are three categories. Nonpolar bonds, only you'd have nonpolar molecules. They're going to be symmetric, of course, as far as the arrangement, even distribution of charge. And this always is going to be your diatomic molecules, your Hopf-Brinkle. So, for example, for hydrogen, they're sharing a pair of elite electrons between them. You can just show a dash. For something like chlorine or any of the al other halogens, I can show the bond, and then i got to show the six dots around each of the chlorines. Remember, the dash represents a pair of electrons, one coming from one atom, one coming from the second atom and you count that for both. Don't forget oxygen forms a double bond and then there are four other electrons left and nitrogen a triple bond with two electrons on either end. 
for polar bonds, polar molecules here in the middle. We say that they are asymmetric as far as charge, meaning it's uneven. And the typical ones you would be looking for would be water, H2O, ammonia, NH3, and something like, oh, we'll do CH3Cl. This is like a chloromethane molecule. Water, of course, is a bent molecule. So I have my oxygen, and don't forget the dots for oxygen. For ammonia, it's NH3. I'm going to draw my three hydrogens connected to my nitrogen with my two valence electrons here on the top. Something like CH3Cl. Again, it's asymmetric because all four bonds are not the same. And here's my Cl with the six dots. I'm sorry these dots are so tiny. But don't forget the extra dots. And also something just simple like two different nonmetals. So just like you have the diatomics over here, which are nonpolar, what if I had H and F? So I have the six around F. That's a polar molecule. The final category here are I have polar bonds, but they're nonpolar molecules. That doesn't say that says no, but they're nonpolar molecules. They're symmetrical because there's an even distribution of charge. The ones that show up most often would be carbon dioxide, methane CH4, or something like CCl4. So for CO2, I have a double bond O on both sides with my four electrons on my oxygen, my CH4, four bonds are the same. And then finally for something like CCl4, I'm going to have to erase over here so you can see it. Okay. Uh, it would look something like this. Now I can't just draw them like this. I need, again, the rest of the dots around the chlorines. So there are six dots around the chlorines. Oh, one that's being shared from chlorine and one shared from carbon. So these molecules here, let me just go to green, even though there's polar bonds on the inside due to the arrangement or symmetry they're considered non-polar molecules so you need to recognize the formulas you need to recognize the names for these three categories and you're supposed to be able to draw the Lewis structures these are the ones that show up most often take a look at what else your teacher told you to remember and let's go back to the beginning go over ionic compounds there's a lot more metal nonmetal than just sodium chloride, and keep working hard, and good luck.